Welcome to Math Mini Lessons. My name is Sarah, and this is day two of the eighth grade session two math review for the New York State exam. So you should have somewhere your copy of the exam. If not, you could actually pause and go through the problems here, and I'll show through the different answers. Or you can find a link and for your own special copy. Now, here's what I can tell you about today's review. There are multiple choice problems and there are constructed response problems. And because this exam is on computers, when it is time to go through these constructed response problems, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the actual sampler. I'll put this link in the description for you where you can do your own practice set of questions for eighth grade. Uh, but what I would suggest is trying down here, let me scroll it up a little bit more, math, eighth grade, and I'm going to hit the equation editor sampler. And you're going to hit start. And this is where you can actually practice just like I will in the videos going through and trying to write the different questions. So you don't, you can cut all these and just go straight to start test. And you'll see here to show your work section and an answer section here at the bottom. Now, if it is a one point question, then you do not have to do this part up here. You just have to write in your answers here under the part where it says answer. For the two and three point questions, you're going to practice showing your work or typing your responses and putting your answers here. And I myself went through it trying to do this myself to show you what it means to write a complete answer. And to have full credit, you have to have a complete and correct response for a two and three point question. It can't just be the answer, you actually have to show your process. And so I went through for this video and made sure to put in my answers in here so you can see what that can look like. And again, you're doing this on paper. First, you have scrap paper. You should do the mathematics on scrap paper. I will say it is pretty challenging to try and type it and do it as you go. Your brain is doing too many things. So my suggestion to you is that you do this math on scrap paper first and then transfer out the important parts into these two boxes to show your work and your thinking and to put in the answer. Uh, so with that, similar to session one, we're going to have the multiple choice questions four at a time, where four questions, I give you the answers, you can review and you can just skip over and check. And if you have the correct answer, you can go to the next section. For the constructor response, I am doing them one at a time. I'll show the answer and then I'll show my entire process and my thinking. I hope this is really helpful. If you do have questions, please put them into the comments. If there's certain types of videos or certain types of things you want reviewed before the state test uh, for the first week of May, just let me know. And I know this is a vacation time. So the fact that you are taking the time to do some review work on your own just shows your commitment to your own academic excellence and trying to grow as, as a math marvel. So thank you for, for taking that extra effort. And if you are finding you're struggling, that's okay. This is the time to go figure out where we have to focus um, and what we can do to make growth because that's what this is about. So with that said, we're gonna jump into our multiple choice section, which starts off on question 33. Day one, you had 32 multiple choice questions. Each of them were worth one point. In day two, you have a uh, multiple choice and constructive response. So you're gonna get six multiple choice, also worth one point. You're gonna get three constructive response questions worth a point, where usually you're just putting in an answer. And then you're getting six constructive responses where you should probably show your work or explain and to get full credit, of course. And then there's one constructive response worth three points. So again, really showing your work. And so I'm gonna just show you all of those here. So let's start off with the first set for multiple choice. And here we go. Uh, so the first, three multiple choice, 33, you have an EE problem, you should get A. And 34 is an EE problem, B. And 35 is a number sense problem, D. So if you got those three correct, you can move on to the next section. If not, come and um, just stay right here so we'll go over them. In the first problem 33, we wanna know which equation represents the graph of the line. And since they're written in Y equals MX, plus B form, we're really gonna look for two things, the slope and then our Y intercept. So pretty much what is that B when X is equal to zero? And luckily these two are really easy to see. Uh, with our Y intercept, just look for the Y over here and we can see that point is here when Y is one, X is zero. So we know the first part 
we know it's going to be positive 1. So mx was positive 1. And for the slope, you can determine the slope. Remember, you're looking at change in y over change in x. And I'm going to use these two points over here. And I'm going to draw a right triangle. And notice I'm going up. I'm looking at the change in y first. And noticing I'm going up 3. So my change in y is positive 3. And my change in x, I'm going from 0 to 6. So 6 is my change in x. So that's all I'm going to put in. My change in y was 3, positive 3, up 3, and I went to the right 6. So my slope m is 3, 6, or m is equal to 1 half. If you had it as a decimal, it would be just 0.5. And so let's put that in. So y is equal, or m is 1 half. Plus one. That's our equation, and boom, there it is. Uh, an easy way we clearly knew that this is our entry point right here, just knowing that one is our B, so immediately you can eliminate B and D, and then you just have to look to see what the slope was, and the, the hot spot is you have to know it's change in Y over change in X. So if kids had done it backwards, if they had done change in X, which was six, and then change in Y, three, then they would have gotten two and that would have been the mistake. So notice they look for that in that error and they put that answer right there in there. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, we want to know which statement is true about function A and B. And again, we're talking about rates of change. So let's figure out the rate of change. And again, we're going to look at the change in Y over the change in X and there are different ways we can pay attention to these so I'm going to look at this first set over here and to go from negative 12 to 4 I'm increasing by 8 and if you're not sure which one a lot of times people use like y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1 so it would take like the the second set of numbers and you would just subtract negative 4 minus negative 12 and you would get 8 so you could do that part but I'm also just looking to go from negative 12 to a uh, negative 4 I know I'm adding 8 I'm just going to erase this word over here because I need some room to work so I'm getting 8 and the change in X I went from negative 6 to negative 2, so plus 4. So I'm getting for the first set 8 over 4, which simplifies to 2. Let's look to see if this is consistent. It should be. Let's just make sure. So from negative 4 to 0, I have a plus 4. And from negative 2 to 0, plus 2. So 4 over 2. Same thing. And the last one from 0 to 4 is 4. 4 and 0 to 2 positive 2 so for function a our rate of change our m is equal to 2 let's look at b and for b I'm going to do my triangle again just like the last time and I'm going to look for a change of y and change of x and so I'm going from 0 to 6 so my change in y is 6 and I'm going over from 0 to 4, so my change in x is 4. So 6 over 4 simplifies to 1 and 2 fourths. And just by looking at that, m is equal to 1 and a half. So which one is bigger? Function a is bigger, has a greater rate of change than function b. Because 2 is greater than 1 and a half. And the only one that says that correctly is B. Rate of change for A is greater than the rate of change for B. Okay. Uh, the other points they had here that, that make it interesting, uh, where it can say, let's on the second one, C, it says it's equal to the rate of change. We know that's not true. And they tried to add in this linear and stuff like that. Doesn't matter. And in D, it says, again, the rate of change is equal. That's not true. And we can see the first one, yeah, A is not less, 2 is not less than 1 half. Let's go to the next one. Which statement about the value of, 
of square root 50 is true. So just looking at it, all this has to do is, is it rational or is it irrational? So I'm just, I know it's not one of our easy square numbers, but I'm gonna check to see, again, is it a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal? That's what you're looking for if it is irrational. And because this is equal to 7.0710067, this is absolutely irrational. So I can get rid of B and C. And for A, it says it's irrational because the decimal repeats. That's not true. And for D, it is non-repeating and does not terminate. So D is the correct answer. I pause and jot this down, make these corrections. We're at the last set of multiple choice, three more to go. So for 36, it's a function problem, the answer is D. For 37, a geometry problem, the answer is C, in terms of pi, ooh, good one. And 38 is also a geometry problem, the answer is A. So again, if you have these correct, move to the next section. If not, we're gonna go through these together. So with the first one, 36, we wanna know which one represents a function, and these are all graphs. So because they're graphs, we're gonna use the vertical line test, meaning we're gonna make a line straight down and it has to hit one time. If it hits more than once, failure. And just by looking at it, like if you tried A, it would hit two times. So this is a fail of the vertical line test. Same thing with C. If you can find any place where it fails, where it hits twice at one point in X, fail. And you, of course, in B, <laughs> completely undefined, because every point hits. So fail, fail, fail. Uh, D is the only one that no matter where I put that line, it's only gonna touch one time. So that's pretty easy. Let's look at 37. We have a cylinder with a height of 56 and a diameter of 22. What is the volume in terms of pi? Okay, so we want the volume of a cylinder, which we've done before. So we're gonna do pi r squared times the height. We have these numbers here. And luckily we can leave pi. So we have, I'm gonna put the r squared first. Now here's our hotspot. They give you a diameter, not a radius. So if our diameter is 22, the radius is half, so 11. So 11 squared times 56 times pi. Okay, so the only thing I'm doing is I'm just moving the pi to the back because I'm not going to worry about that right now. So 11 squared is 121 times 56. And that gives us 6,776 pi. Now it says I can leave it in terms of pi so I don't have to multiply by pi. But there you go. There's your answer. And again, they, they do look to see when kids forget, and if you had used 22, you would have gotten a, a way bigger answer. So that's the hot spot. And the last multiple choice question, we have a quadrilateral graph. So again, use your graph paper. Do not try to do this in your head. You can actually graph it and know for sure. And we have point negative four, three. So I'm just gonna sketch it. So negative four, three. So this is point C. Okay, uh, with point C at negative four, three. And it is reflected over the y-axis to create a new image for this new point. So I'm going to reflect it right over this y-axis. So it's gonna flip over. And so from here to here is four. So I'm just gonna do the opposite over here. The positive four. And this is C prime. So what would the, the point, the coordinates be for that point? It would be four, three, and that would be A. So there you go. You can hit pause and jot this down into your notes. And now we're gonna jump into our next section, which is constructive response. For the constructive response, I'm actually gonna use the equation editor for next era since New York is going to be taking the eighth grade exam on computers. Since it is a one point question, it is only gonna have that bottom answer box. And you'll notice I am gonna use that same calculator feature even though I've been using a different calculator throughout, throughout all our practice. But just to get us knowing where everything is, I, I thought this would be helpful. 
So for number 39, a one point question, we just have to put an answer. We want to know what is the solution for x and when we have x to the third power equals 125 and so the answer we're looking to put in is either 5 or x equals 5 or 5 to the third power equals 125 so you would write this out on paper obviously you're trying to solve it and you're finding the cube root so that x is equal to now you have to find the cube root of 125 if you know already your cube numbers 5 times 5 times 5 makes 25 fantastic you would just have this but if you do not you on your calculator we're going to clear this up you, we to find the cube root we're going to put three second and then we're going to use this little button here that has that little x and the square root number and now we're going to type 125 enter and you'll get five okay uh, so we have that here we have our answer any of those will do and the only thing we would have to put in here when we're typing is literally just type in the five now because I have an iPad obviously I have a stylus uh, but normally you would just type in five now the other thing you could do is you can type in X is equal to five you can type that or you could also type and I'm going to I want to bring up my keyboard for a second so we have it uh, I might do five and to get that little number up top I'm gonna to want this box okay so notice how when I just type five it's not gonna give me that little number so we're gonna go back a sec and I'm gonna hit this first and now I'm going to put oops, for here five and up here to the third power. OK, so I want it in the box. It is a little challenging. I'm not going to say it isn't because I'm using a stylus. So it should be a little easier when you have your uh, when you're gonna have your your com a computer keyboard, but there we go. I can put five to the third power is equal to one twenty five. Okay, and you can just leave that. Now, if you have a stylus like I do, I'm gonna return it. Then I could just write five to the third power is equal to one twenty five. But any of those answers will do. Ooh, so this is a good point to know. Like when I did it with a stylus, just look what happened. Like it looked like 53. So good thing to know. So I might put a five, a carrot for a three is equal to 125. So I might type that. Let's see if I'll type that in. Oh, guess it didn't. Okay, but at least we have that, that little function. So you do have to hit that top little that little box that shows the exponent. So good thing that we're trying these things out because they can be a little challenging and practice beforehand. You, I can put the link to this so you can practice typing these answers in. Let's look at number 40. Uh, the answer would have just been 15 or D equals 15, which is good because that means I can, I can literally just, um, I wanna just delete all this. That's easy enough for me to be able to type. So that's good. All right, so triangle DEF is a right triangle with a, so I know it's gonna be a right triangle. So I'm gonna draw one, very simple. Uh, vertex, right angle is at F. So here's F. And DF has a side of nine. And EF from F to E, 12 what is d to e so now that we have that we're going to use our Pythagorean theorem x squared let me get rid of I don't want the this showing here in the bottom plus b squared equals c squared and I'm just going to put in my numbers the two legs and I'm getting 81 plus 144 is equal to c squared and if Here on the bottom, 
And if we put our calculator up, we get 81 plus 144 is equal to 225. Oops, sorry, 225. And you're finding the square roots of those two numbers to find C. So clear, we want the square root of 225, and we get 15. Okay, so you can type in either 15 or DE equals 15. And that's all you would put in here. I'm gonna put the little writing tool instead to make it easier, just because I have a stylus. I would just put DE is equal to 15. And it would add that image. Or you can just literally type in and just put in 15 as your answer, or DE is equal to 15. Either one would be fine. And that's it. So I'm going to erase that for now and hide the keyboard so we can go to the next one. Okay, I'm going to delete that. All right, here's our next one point question. Again, these are the simpler ones. So now we have an equation. We just want to know the value of x. So negative 8 minus 5x equals 20. And I want to isolate, so I'm going to create a zero pair by adding 8 on both sides. And I'm going to divide by negative 5. And I get x is equal to. Now, you could leave it as negative 28 over 5. They do accept that answer. Or you could use your calculator if you wanted to and do 28 divided by 5 and you will get 5.6 and just know it's negative. So you could type that in or you could type it as a fraction as a negative 5 and 3 fifths. Either of these answers will work. Now, in terms of typing in your answer into these boxes, this is what I would say. Um, you would have to look for the fractional ones. So you would have to tap the fractional one that makes sense and tap in there to put in the numbers you want. So that was a little bit more complicated. So you would have your negative five, you tap into the next part, three fifths. So that answer is done. Or, I'm gonna put a few spaces here, you can just type in negative 5.6. Now I would make sure in words, if you're putting both answers, please make sure you're putting or in there because you don't want them to think that both those numbers are connected. It make it super obvious if you're putting more than one answer that you're separating them for whoever's reading it, okay? All right, so let's go hide the keyboard again. And now we're up to the two credit problems. So I'm gonna clear off my space. And now this is where I have to show work as well as have complete correct answers. So let's look at this first one, number 42. And for number 42, it is a lovely geo problem and I have to explain my answer, meaning I'm going to have to type an answer for this. And we have a triangle and I need to under, uh, share in some way, shape or form what kind of sequence of transformations. There are three possible answers that you can have for here. Uh, so how do I go from this to this is my question. And so one way, and I'm going to discuss all of them, is I can see a reflection over the x, the x-axis, and then a slide, a, a translation towards the right and down, okay? So that's one answer. You, you can type different ones in. So a reflection over, oops, not the x-axis, over the x-axis. And then I'm going to go, let's actually draw it in so we can see it. So here's where X would be. So in order to get X to this place, I'm going to have to go over and down. 
So I'm going over one, two, three, and down two. And I have to be able to put all this into words. And the same thing for all the other points. Here's Z. And I would also go over one, two, three, and down two. And the same thing for Y. Y would go to negative five, so it's opposite. And I would also, just making sure, three, five, yep. And I would go over to three and down two. So it does map. All my, my points do map to the points I want. So that's one way. And if that's my answer, then I would end up having to type that into, into my answer. Um, I would put reflect, I would use four words, the triangle over the X axis, and then translate to the right three units and down two units. So I would have to do all that and put that into, into that space. So that's literally all you would have to do when it says explain. Um, but you want to make sure that it's a full sentence that is very easy to read through. And just thinking about it for a second, look at how I'm translating all this into full words so that someone else can read it and they can see what I'm doing. So it's very clear. Now, the other two answers you could have put in there is you could have said you were going to translate um, you're going to translate three right down two and then reflect over the x-axis. So that would be a second answer if you hit it that way. The third possible answer would be you could say to reflect and they would accept if you said translate and this is a little harder to type. So I didn't want to type this one where you would say x plus three, because you're going to write three times, and y minus two. That's probably the weirdest one. I don't expect a lot of kids to write that, but they would have taken any of those three answers. All right, so let's hit pause and jot this one down, and we're gonna go to the next two-point problem. All right, we're gonna look at this one over here, and there are multiple answers you can have. We're gonna solve for x, and you can have numbers that are either fractions, mixed numbers, or a repeating decimal. So just so you can see how I would make a choice, if I wanted the mixed number, I would hit that symbol, and you can see it boxed off. And then inside, I would have to actually type in, here's my keyboard. I would just type the two, my numerator is one, my denominator is three. So that's one thing I can do. If I wanted the mixed number, just a fraction, even though it's improper, again, you have to tap in there, two to seven over three. And if you want the repeating decimal, now notice where the bar is. The bar is over the three. So I'm gonna put the two in the decimal. And because the three is gonna have a bar, I'm gonna hit this symbol here that has a bar over it. And then I'm gonna write three. So those are three of the possible answers you can put in. Now, because this is a problem that says show your work, that means I have to work it out and put it into this top box up here. And this is, definitely a little bit more complicated because we're solving for X and it's going to take a few steps. So I'm just going to work through this problem. And then I have some options. I could either, if I had a stylus, I can hit, let me make this a little bigger. I can hit this and literally start working through the problem. So this, oops. If, I, if you have a stylus, this is super helpful. But if you don't, so here's the first part. I can't see the question. So when you're taking the test, that box is so big, I might have to make it smaller and move it so I can read the question, just know that. Um, but I'm gonna clear off for a second. I'm gonna pretend like I don't have a stylus because many people who are gonna take this test will not have one. So let's work through. And unfortunately, this means I'm gonna have to type out a lot of this. Okay, so I'm going to start with just distributing. So that's 15x plus 63 minus 9. Nothing is simplified here. I'm going to combine my like terms over here. 
So I get 15x plus 54 is equal to 24x plus 33. Um, I'm going to move my 15x over. I want to make that a zero pair. So I have 9x plus 33 is equal to 54. Subtract 33 and you have scrap paper for this. So 9x is equal to 21. And then divide by 9. So x is equal to, again, you have all the different answers here at the bottom. So here's the annoying part. To type all this in is going to be a little frustrating. And I get it. Because I'm a little frustrated having to do it as well. That's okay. We're going to get through this. So I would just literally have to type out all of that using my computer into that box. I'm not going to type the entire thing out, but again, the, it, this is about showing you understand. And just because of the sake of this being a video, I'm not going to write all of it out. But I want you to see, I would put a line, I would press return, and then I would just go to the next section. That's all I would do. Okay, so, and that way you can see each step, what I'm doing, because that's what they want to be able to see. They want to see how you're working through the process, and that's basically what they want to see. So that's what we're going to give them. Remember, complete and correct work. Now, what I can see a lot of kids wanting to do is this is really frustrating to type all of this in. And I can see a lot of kids just going and saying, uh, I'm just going to put in an answer. And just recognizing that that's just, it's a loss of a point and you do have as much time as you want. So you could always just type it in, come back to it. I get it's frustrating. I get it. It's taking that extra effort but at least you'll have a complete answer as you're going through this. And just notice how, as I'm simplifying, it's getting smaller and smaller. Oh, I forgot an X. So just make sure you're being careful with these little points. I'm giving myself grace, but I'm also checking each time to make sure. And this is where, um, obviously, I don't have to write in the minus 33. What I could do here is just put the 24x is equal to, and I've already subtracted, actually, what did I want it to do? No, I subtracted the 15 from both sides. That's what I did in my work. So here's our 9x plus 33. is equal to, and now I've already subtracted the 15, 54, okay? So doing that, I, can, I know I've subtracted 15. If you really want to show them you did, you could even just write it in words, subtract 15. You can write down the side what you did for each line. If you think that would help, you could always do that. And then I can do the next part, which is just going to be the 9x. is equal to 21 and that should be enough so that people can see what it is you did each time and then x this is the last part i don't want capital x x is equal to and now i want 21 over 9 so now i'm going to use that button 21 over nine okay and then I will put whatever my final answer is lowercase x is equal to I wanted the two and three tenths so I would again put that in there and type three tenths so that is enough work to show that I know what I did that whole process is there if you really feel stuck if you want to see what you could also just uh, type it on the side, distribute, and they'll know you distribute, distributed. And here you might put combine like terms, and they'll know you combine like terms. And here you will put subtract 
15 so you, you can see you subtracted 15 and then you knew your next step was to subtract 33 and then our last step we wanted to divide by 9 and then I simplified that's it and it shows all my stuff so that's what I would do in a case like this it's frustrating and I know it's that that extra step and it's I get it I completely understand it but just show your work in there I would rather get both points than just get one point because I'm frustrated especially when it's done time test all right so hit pause and drop this down. okay let's look at the next one here you have a triangle RST has lengths 8 10 and 13 is this a right triangle so we have some type of triangle 8 10 and 13 we are not exactly sure which is which um, but we want to know would it make a right triangle we're going to use our Pythagorean theorem to check it being that this is the biggest side length we know this would be our hypotenuse so we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared and we're going to do 8 squared plus 10 squared is equal to 13 squared 64 plus 100 is equal to 13 squared is 169 and 64 164 is not equal to 169 so no it is not a right triangle and this one is saying to explain how we determine our answer so of course I would type in in this part I would say no is not a right triangle and then in the show your work I would make sure that I would probably have this written out I will put a squared plus b squared equals c squared and I would type each line just like this to show that it, they're not equivalent so that's all I would do for for this one because it says explain let's go to the next one which is also a two point problem and we have two different functions we want to know which function has a greater rate of change we've done this a number of times so we know how to do this we're going to look at uh, function a first let's look at what those would be from negative 30 to negative 18 we've increased by 12 and 2 over here so 12 over 2 means our rate of change is 6 we'll just confirm it one more time just to make sure from negative 18 to 12, that's plus 30. And from negative 3 to 2, that's 5. So 30 over 5 is equal to 6. And the last set, 12 and 2, is equal to 6. So I need to be able to explain all that um, somehow in my, in my work, show that. And I'll, I'll show you how I do that. And then for B, I'm looking for the same thing, change in Y over X. So I'm going up three, positive three, and going from zero to six. So here my M is equal to one half. All right, so for function A, I have six, which is greater than one half. So how would I show that in my work? So again, I would type that in. Um, but then in my work, I would probably just do an explanation that says something um, like this. I would say function A has a rate of change of 6. And I might show on the next line um, that little, let's see, I'll put a, a triangle, actually, I know do let's make it even better I'm going to make it as a fraction and I will put change in Y over change in X is equal to and then I put another fraction and I will put some of my points in there 12 over 2 which is equal to six. Okay, so I'm just taking an example and then I will do the same thing. Function B has a rate of change of, and I will put the little fraction mark here, one half. 
and then I would do the same thing again where I would put my little fraction bar up top and I'll put my triangle change Y over change an X is equal to and I put another little one in here and then I would have 3 over 6 and which I already know is equal to 1 half and that's enough for me to show that I know how to do this that I know how to do this work um, and I, if I really wanted to get fancy with it I would just put 6 is greater than 1 half And then I would just type in for my answer, because that's the answer line, function A is greater. Function A has a greater rate of change. And that's it. That's all I will put in. So you can hit pause and you can jot this down also in your work and check. All right, for this one, our correct answer is just to be 113, which is going to be very easy to type here in our box uh, where we'd have A is equal to, so I just put my equal sign, 113. So that's going to be the easy part. The rest of it is going to be a little, little bit more. That's okay. We have the surface of a trampoline is a circle with a diameter of 12. What is the area? Of the top circle so we just want area of a circle and that's pi r squared and we know a diameter is equal to 12 so if d is equal to 12 the radius is equal to 6 so area is equal to 6 squared pi area is equal to 36 pi and they didn't want us to leave it in terms of pi it has to be to the closest number so when you do this on your calculator when you type it in you're going to get a long number like this with a whole bunch of things behind it. So we want it to the nearest where they, the nearest whole number. So because this is a zero, we're going to put 113. So that's all you would have to type in to this part. Um, literally, that's it. And you have our symbols. Now for the calculator, just so you know, um, if I wanted to know what 36 pi was, I would just put 36 and then pi, enter, and you would get the number. So I just want to make sure you you know how to enter that part in. But literally, I would just type in all these different parts. So A is equal to, and you have the, the symbol over there. Here's our keyboard. A is equal to pi, and then we want, here we go, R. I want the little r, r squared. It's going to look weird. It's okay. And then I would just type in the next part. A is equal to, so they have to see, you know, 6 squared. So I'm going to have to put in 6 squared. And here's my pi symbol. So this one's not too bad to type out at all. And then you would put in a is equal to 36 pi and then you would have your to just to show you would just put in um, 113.0 so then you can just put a is equal to 113 and that's enough work to show because notice I have my formula I've substituted with the right radius so they know where we got the radius we uh, evaluate to find what that number is and then we found it to that next number because we would have gotten 0 0.97 and that's that's it this one here we have a student claiming that 5 over to the 7 power over 5 to the third is equivalent to 5 to the 6 times 5 to the negative second power so now we have some exponent rules that we're going to work through uh, so we have, let's work this out. Um, here, I know I'm just subtracting these because that is a quotient rule. So I would have 5 to the 4th. Is this equal to, 
and here I'm just adding them up together five to the fourth and somehow I would just name yeah this is true so what I'm gonna want to explain in my um, put in my explanation is why so I would put in my explanation this is the quotient rule that 5 to the 7th over 5 to the 3rd is equal to 5 to the 4th because of the quotient rule. And then I would name this one over here that says a power rule. And so I subtracted them. That's all you would write down in your explanation. And that's a two-pointer. All right, let's go to the last one, which is our three-point problem. Final one out of all these. You have three different functions, and we need to determine uh, whether each is linear or nonlinear. So just being able by looking at it with the last one, we can definitely tell this is linear because we can see the graph has a constant rate of change. It's completely linear. Um, with the first function a, it is written in slope intercept form. So I know this is also linear because our X is to the first power. And if I graph it, it would make a line. And so the last one to determine is really that B, that B one is this one linear. So what I'm going to do is let's look here from one to zero. I'm going to subtract one and to go from negative one to zero, I'm adding one. And for here from zero to one, I'm adding one. So automatically something's different. And from here to here, I'm adding one. So my rate of change is not consistent here. So this is not linear. And if you go to the next one, I have it's going up three and I'm going up one. So just look at all the different rates we have here. We have negative one, one, and then we have one, one and three, one. So our rate of change is changing in B each time. Uh, so I know that this one would not be linear. And that's what you will put into your explanation. You would luckily, this is one you can just type where you would have to say for all three, for function A, you would have to say it is linear because it is an equation written in slope intercept form. And when you graph it, it makes a straight line. For B, it is not linear. When you graph it, it will not make a straight line. It does not have a constant rate of change. And for function C, it is graphed and we can see that it is linear with a constant rate of change. And that is exactly what you would type into that box. So that's it. If you did all of that, you would complete all three points. If you only wrote about two of them, you would get two points if you were correct. And if you only had one of them, you would get one point. So that's the entire exam. You can add up all the points and see how you would have done. And if there are certain topics that you know you're struggling with, that's what I would review during this break. That's it for now, Math Marvels. This was a beast of a test. I know it's challenging that now it's on a computer, but I know you can do this. It is a challenge and challenges are meant to be challenging and that's okay. You can absolutely do this. Just take your time and don't let emotion get in the way of doing things that you know how to do. Emotion is what will make us forget, makes us anxious and make silly mistakes for mathematics that we've been capable of doing all year. That's it for now, Math Marvels. I'll see you in the next one. Be well. Thank you.